is ready. <laughs> oh, we're so ready. <laughs> for the, for the following ready? crime yeah. against me. Make sure you stand. That's it. Okay, I'm going to start the video, and you're doing that tax on the uh, off you go. Now, you've probably heard it in the air these past few weeks. Goes right up in a rap song, as if it wasn't free. But you see, this rhyme was made to educate you on taxonomy and its related aspects. And I'm going to go quite fast to keep your brain set. I'll start off with some background, move on to advanced topics. And from there, I'll probably go downhill, because I'm not a rapper, I'm just playing some gimmicks. And honestly, this thing won't be 20 minutes long, I'll get it done ASAP. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I present the taxonomy. Copyright 2012, Great Hargreaves, all right, deserve prolonged exposure to my rapping ability mainly to erectile dysfunction, smallpox, and immaculate conception. Now, taxonomy. It tells you where things ought to be. It's the discipline of classification of categories in the hierarchy, a term deriving from the animal kingdom, a method by which we give species classification. I lift up an example with this bat called Sabrinus, the long tongue fruit bat of the Macroglossus genus, residing with the family Pteropididae, and within that, the subfamily Macroglossinae. <laughs> but that's not what we're here for discussing now, is it? I just wanted some background before we got with it. You see, taxonomy is fundamental to info architecture. It's the one IA component that lords over all here. Now, taxonomy ties it all together, you'll see. And I ain't the kind of person to call other things silly, but semantic search patterns, they all dig my taxonomy. Some say it's the big dog, but you didn't hear that from me. <laughs> and taxonomy is big for just one major thing, to make data accessible, to organise everything. Taxonomy is useful for so many goals, from organising books to categorising bog rolls. I mean, you have one ply, two ply, medicated, jumbo size, bleached white worm type, padded out and pattern styled, perfume waxed up, moisturised with extra pulp, cross brown, uptown, and the stuff that just won't flush down. Now there are two types of taxonomy, and I'll do my best to explain. There's top down, bottom up, that's all I've got to say. Top down taxonomy is kind of like a directory, one set of tabs, one sorting order, one vocabulary. It imposes some limits on how information is organised to make finding it easier, as Aristotle theorised. And because it's controlled by executive jurisdiction, you can use it for your site's main navigation. And there are so many forms that top down can take. There's some exact schemes, the rest are just fake. Exact schemes are all mutually objective, alphabetical, chronological, you can't dispute this. Now, alphabetical and chronological, they're pretty contrived. Sort people by surname or a date in an archive. But, and geographical sort is great for spatial awareness, but you can't map the world in your head, so it's not flawless. And, wow, the, <laughs> the opposite of exact schemes are those are ambiguous, such as sorted by subject, quite like a library is. Now, this would sound simple, but believe me, it's ruddy complicated. Prototype, theory, classification that's faceted. I'll get back to that later, though, because I don't want to drive you mad just yet. So, first we'll try some task-based taxonomy, and that, I mean, that's an easy role. Leading the user through a process to reach just one goal. Think like an Amazon with their buying process. Add to basket, proceed to checkout, and you made your purchase. Tasks are more like a subset of your website architecture. It's just for one specific part, not your whole IA answer. And organised deletion by audience may not sound pleasant, but dividing by language helps provide what's relevant. Now the next kind of taxonomy is the art of the metaphor, the organisation of data in ways that are familiar. Think like a computer. You keep your docs in your folders, you dispose in a bin. It's to aid familiarity when you're new to these things. And categorising by format is best for multimedia. Be it the big picture or some pornographic videos to burn into your retina looking at you, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that assignment we had some months ago? A tutorial site for podcasting shows. That was an example of sorting by format. One page for reviews, one for tuts, and one for cheap tap. You see, organisational ta taxonomy is the last top-down I'm going to mention, and its level of usefulness is a point of contention. Unless the end users know where to find the big boss, then locating stuff about them is a cause that is lost. Organisational taxonomy is kind of internal, and finding information without prior knowledge is kind of impossible. Now let's all compare all this to bottom-up, better known as folksonomy. The navigation is made by the users, not some faceless authority. Millions of users providing their identification, totally crowdsourcing the organisational system. But this method, magic method doesn't always serve function, because the system's always open to manipulation. An unlimited number of tags? Dude, that's too many. We don't need 3,000 versions of my mate Henry. And while folks on is awesome at finding what's cool, using it for everything makes you a tool. Folks on is rubbish for your main navigation. A million, a million menu items? Dude, that's an abomination. 
Now, my functionary example's in the air. Do you hear it? This shit's called hip-hop, and you better believe it. <laughs> Some genre of this hit. It's called nerdcore, just like me. I got a pocket protector, not shit made by Nike. <laughs> Musical genres like this are all sorts of made up. Do you think before Massive Attack there was a thing called trip-hop? There are so many genres, you just kind of go with the flow. And I don't own a pocket protector, just so you know. Now other rappers diss me. They say my rhymes are sissy. And now I'm ripping off Flight of the Concord, so I'm just going to get back to the taxonomy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move on to linguistics for some prototype theory. A definition-based model for describing what we see. If it's got feathers and wings can pick and, and can fly, it's a bird. Don't be silly. Well, that's not entirely unle accurate unless you forget a kiwi. But that's why this stuff's called the basic level. It's a general concept, not pedantic detail. Basic level's in the words that you use every day. After all, it's a bat, not a pterapididae. But this basic level's not always good at what you're going to say. You don't just go for a dessert, you go for an ice cream sundae. Now, can the real Paul Matthews please stand up? Please stand up. Please stand up. <laughs> <laughs> and now, I've finished that interview now, so you can sit down again. <laughs> Another advanced topic is faceted classification, which takes the principles of library science and stamps over all of them. <laughs> Taking precision in the hierarchies and telling them to vamoose. Faceted classification's flexible. It's good for any use. You see, the categories that hold each checkbox in this classification, they're facets, and they rock. You can combine elements of facets to create something new, to express functionality, make assertions, or bring something special to view. And mind that when data is faceted, it's still in a category, but those categories aren't enforced. You can browse freely. The user's put in control of the faceted method, and find what is cheapest, find what's cool, find what's better. And while its only real use is to filter long lists of stuff, it's a usability awesome, it gets rid of the guff. And that's about all I have for taxonomic advice. And I really want to end this rap and wrap it up nice, and I'm really running out of rhymes and something, something rice. So, I'm going to move on quickly, I'm gonna, I'll make some mentions, but for now, to conclude my rap song, any questions? Yeah. <laughs> wow. My mind has been blown. <laughs> oh, my words. Any questions involving a word that's really hard to rhyme with? <laughs> Why did you pick orange as your colour? Yes. <laughs> Why is your colour orange? <laughs> now the reason I picked this colour. The colour orange is because it's my favourite flavour of wasn't. Oh, <laughs> so, how would you connect these things to a thesaurus? Yes. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> At least I'm quite sure it is. I'm going to have to go get one to make sure that it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good at improv. Should probably work on that. Yeah, it makes you look like a bit of a. Quack. <laughs> <laughs> that, no, that was that was that was incredible. Yeah. Okay, I think we're going to move on. So thank you very much. For that.